Good morning. Bible is telling us to uh, wear the God's full body armor. And today we're going to figure out why. The war batters are really terrible. It's horrible. And in heaven, there was one war in heaven uh, for the first time. And it was the beginning of betrayer of the archangel Lucifer, which refers to Satan. And we have to know what the battle is about so that we can fight it well. Uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 7 through 8. And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon with and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So this dragon, how does this dragon now try his best to win over the people of God? In, on this earth right now. And how does Satan approach us spiritually? So the tryings and succeeding of Satan's temptation on Eve and Adam can also reach to us right now, reach us right now. So the emotions and this really, really sweet thoughts that Satan is putting on us right now, just like he did to Eve and Adam. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 21, it says, I, found, I find then a law that evil is pre present with me and one who wills to do good. So which means in our mind, there are two different sides. One is good and the other one is evil. So that's what we can actually see in our mind, the battle between good and evil. It is not because of any decree that God has sent, our, sent out against man. He does not make man spiritually blind. God gives sufficient light and evidence to enable man to distinguish truth from error. But he does not force man to receive truth. He leaves him free to choose the good or to choose the evil. So we can choose evil or we can choose good. So Satan can put these strong emotions inside our head and mind. Also, God does the same thing. But how do we figure out our happiness, our feelings are uh, coming from where? We can see that. We can actually distinguish between both of them because of our fruit, fruit of life. So Satan tempts us by some beautiful songs to arouse our feelings inside of us. So we have to check it for ourselves. Satan might give a certain happy feeling if the Christian had only the feeling to go by, he would be deceived. The Lord does not deal in feelings, but in facts. So those of you who actually are tempted by those feelings easily, you have to listen to this, the words of God today very carefully, which means we have, there are two different broadcasting systems. Satan who puts these feelings, but without any fruits, without any good fruits. But God is putting emotions into our, our mind to bear fruits. So we have to check for ourselves. Especially in these end times before Jesus coming, Satan is trying to tempt us with the various different ways. So we, we are dragged by Satan, Satan's thoughts and feelings. Then in the end, we are no longer be able to refuse that feeling that Satan is putting in us. So this is a real problem. So uh, we have one sickness. 
a schizophrenia, and a schizophrenic who cannot disobey the voice of his mind that commands him. So this is the end that we can see nowadays. So a schizophrenic actually thinks the voices inside his or her head is the only truth. So I've also experienced this before. I s e v e r a l people who were suffering from this schizophrenia, and they did the same. 극심한 우울 상태를 하나의 극으로 보고 또 극심한 조증 상태를 반대의 극으로 본다면 정상적인 상태를 그 중간 지점이라고 표현할 수 있는데요. 조울증은 이 양극을 오가는 병이라고 할수 있습니다. 극심한 우울, 극심한 조증 상태 혹은 정상적인 상태를 오가게 되는 거죠. 이세 가지의 상태가 지속되는데 정해진 기간이나 순서는 없습니다. 몇 주간의 우울증 뒤에 조증이 찾아오기도 하고 또몇달 동안 지속된 조증 뒤에 우울증이 찾아오기도 합니다. 경미한 조증의 경우 고조된 기분이 지속적으로 이어지고 또 행복감을 느끼는 등 전혀 논리적이지 않은 긍정적인 생각들을 하게 됩니다. 반면 극심한 조증의 경우엔 수많은 생각들이 아주 빠른 속도로 머릿속을 스치고 지나가서 짧은 순간에 넘쳐나는 생각을 본인 스스로도 감당할 수가 없게 된다고 하는데요. 그러다 보니 당연히 말하는 주제도 계속해서 바뀌게 되고 또 말하는 속도도 굉장히 빨라진다고 합니다. 생각도 빠르게 스쳐가고 또 신체적으로도 에너지가 과도하게 넘치는 상태가 되는데요. 신체가 항상 고조되고 흥분된 상태다 보니까 잠을 자지 못하기도 하고 또 수면의 필요성을 느끼지 못하기도 합니다. 잠을 자지 않아도 에너지가 넘치고 활동적인 느낌이 드는 거죠. 그래서 간혹 이런 조증 환자들을 보고 암페타민이나 코카인 같은 각성제 마약을 복용한 것으로 잘못 오인하는 경우도 있다고 합니다. 하지만 이 환자들은 약물이 없이도 이런 증상들이 일어나게 되는 거죠. 심각한 경우엔 환영을 보거나 또 환청을 듣기도 하는데요. 유명인사와 친분이 있다고 생각하거나 혹은 본인이 유명인사라고 믿게 되면서 거만하고 오만한 모습을 보이는 경우가 있다고 합니다. 또 굉장히 충동적인 행동을 하는 경우가 많은데요. 감당하지 못할 정도의 지출을 한다거나 또 위험한 과속운전을 하는 등 신중하지 못하고 쉽게 결정을 내리기도 합니다. 갑자기 직장을 관두거나 새로운 이성 때문에 연인과 쉽게 헤어지기도 하죠. 극심한 조증의 고조된 흥분 상태는 좌절이나 분노, 우울감, 또 폭력적인 행동 등으로 쉽게 변질될 수도 있습니다. 그래서 다른 사람에게 해를 끼치거나 충동적으로 자학 행위, 또 자살 행위 등을 하게 될 가능성도 있기 때문에 아주 위험할 수 있는데요. 미국을 대표하는 작가 어니스트 해밍웨이와 또 천재 화가인 반 고흐도 극심한 조울증을 알았다고 합니다. So they feel both pleased as well as depressed. So why do they fall into those kind of feelings? It is sure that some other being out of their mind actually putting those ideas and feelings inside their minds. So all we have to do is that we have to cut off the sources of that feeling. So when you see those treatments from the doctors in the hospital, they actually use some kind of hypnotism. They hypnotize those patients to cut off those things, but it cannot. Satan tempted the first Adam in Eden, and Adam reasoned with the enemy, thus giving him the, the advantage. Satan exercised his power of hypnotism over Adam and Eve, and this power he strove to exercise over Christ. But after the word of Scripture was quoted, Satan knew that he had no chance of triumphing. So when Satan is putting his own thoughts inside our mind to hypnotize us, we have to use the word of God to overcome those temptations and thoughts. So a lot of people are enjoying, you know, uh, having this egg as their food. 
Yeah. There are two different, <laughs> there are the different types of these uh, eggs. One is an uh, unfertilized egg. And the other one is a uh, infertile egg. And, and this baby chick hatches from this egg almost after a month. And uh, the composition of an egg is like this. The outside, we can see a pea, right? And the white thing is called glare. And the yellow, we called it as a yolk. And then inside the yolk, there's a seed. So this seed is very important then, because this seed will become, and the yellow part and seed will become a chick. When these eggs to be hatched into a chick, the peel has to stay strong. If this peel of an egg breaks, then this egg won't be able to become chick. So we have to be really careful about this peel not to be broken. So this peel is actually refers to as a living body. And as I mentioned just a while ago, there's glare and there's a yolk. And the Bible is talking about our body as a glare, the outward man. And the yolk inside the yellow part of, the, of an egg, the yolk, refers to as an inward man. This yolk is smaller than the white part of the egg. But when this yolk, the yellow part, the smaller part, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then it actually fills the entire part of our body. So this Bible is talking about like this, Romans chapter 7, verse 22 through 23. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So this inward man, this yellow yoke, loves to follow God. But this white part, glare, the outward man loves to follow the law of evil. So, when we are tempted by Satan, we love to follow Satan's thought, then the white part of our, our body will grow bigger and bigger. But when we try our best to cut off Satan's temptation by the word of God and actually uh, let our yoke grow bigger and bigger, and that time, we're going to follow God more and more. When an enemy is shooting fiery arrows to the village, as you can see in this picture, and the houses in the village will be burned, right? And when we just leave it that way, then whole village will be burned down. But when these fiery arrows were shot into the, our own mind that we have to put out the fire immediately. So when we just leave it away and let it burn the whole village, which means our mind, then our mind will be actually tempted. So the method that Satan is using is that Satan actually try to appeal his thoughts to our mind, our selfishness. And the book of James says like this, chapter 1, verse 14 through 15, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has to, uh, conceived, it gives birth to sin, and the sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Satan knows who we are, and what kind of person we are. He knows what we want, and our desire, our mind. So when Satan tempts us to give us what our selfishness wants, then we grab that temptation by ourselves. So the war we are fighting here, it's not about, not between man and man, not between people. But we have to fight against Satan, which we cannot win. 
So the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 through 13, it says like this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the, this age, against spiritual hosts of the wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So as Bible is talking about today, is telling us today that we have to wear the whole armor of God. So if we wear the whole armor of God, we can stand, we can withstand this temptation from, from Satan, from this darkness. So do we have to just leave the city, leave where we live right now, and go to countryside and just leave there without anybody seeing us? No, that's not it. That's not the truth. We have to stay where we are, but only to wear the full armor of God. I remember uh, my wife and I had a, a lot of fight all along the way, of course. And uh, the night we had a fight, uh, when I slept, I actually, I couldn't actually sleep at night only to think about the fight and then what could I do? You know, should I live with, with that woman, you know, actually? So I stay overnight many times thinking about uh, the reason that we, I, a reason that we fought. But actually, come to think of it, I didn't have to stay overnight. The, it was a Satan who put those idea and my feeling got worsened because of the concept and thought that Satan has put in me. Satan magnifies their words and acts before the mind and thus hurts a dart from his quiver to pierce us. We brace ourselves to resist the one whom we think has injured us and by doing so, we encourage Satan's temptations. Instead of praying to God for strength to resist Satan, we suffer our happiness to be marred by trying to stand for what we term our rights. Thus, we allow Satan a double advantage. So now, Bible is talking about, I mean, teaching us right now how to fight against the evil thoughts that Satan is putting in us. So when we feel a little uh, offended or get mad or angry, we actually try to make things bigger by receiving the thoughts that Satan is putting in us. So most of us are fighting this right now. Please raise your hands if anyone there who haven't fought this fight Nobody, right? So when we, we can actually help other people win over this kind of fight. When we experience victory in Christ. So that's why we have to win this fight. They may take the form of fear, discouragement, impatience, unholy thoughts, and the anger or any other vice. So this fiery arrow, when it comes inside our mind, from Satan, then it will. It, it becomes bigger and bigger. Discouragement, fear, impatience, unholy thoughts, envy, anger. So it gives us so many different thoughts. The love of Christ is not the fitful feeling, but a living principle, which is to be made manifest as an um, abiding power in the heart. If the character and deportment of the shepherd is an exemplification of the truth he advocates, the Lord will set the seal of his approval to the work. It's our behavior, our character, when our character and our behavior actually meets the gospel, the truth, then that's the time it will shine its own light and it will be spread onto other people. So one of the pastor's wives, 
she came here and she learned how to put this word of God into practice in her life. And she went back to her home. And she has, according to her, another enemy, right? You know who the enemy is, right? The enemy is husband. It could be your own children too. Maybe. So she experienced the same thing. Satan puts the idea to enlarge her problems in her mind, and she accepted it. And this is her. So this is how we should fight. There are many enemies Satan has made us think about. But when we look at Jesus, not look at our enemies, then God will change our hearts and our mind and behavior. So according to this pastor's wife, she told me last time that she's so happy with her children as well as her husband too. So whenever Satan is trying to put the, his own evil ideas inside us, we just ignore them and ignore those thoughts and do not respond to Satan's temptations, but just looking at Jesus and follow the gospel. Then, that's the time we can be finally free from all the temptations. I have been personally experiencing this. Whenever this fiery arrow comes to us, we have to put it off immediately, which means we have to cut off the line, cut off those ideas and thoughts from Satan. So we, God gave us actually this freedom of choice. So whenever we choose God, then He will give us the power to win over all the temptations, all the worries and concerns over the world. So God is actually telling us to have the shield of faith. The faith has this effect on us. Faith stops the arrows of temptation before they become seen in, in the soul. Temptations and all asserts of the enemy are to be encountered before they reach the vulnerable parts of the spiritual body. So the faith stops the arrows of temptation before they become seen in the soul. So whenever we are falling into this temptation, and we call out the name of Jesus immediately, Jesus, please help me. Then, the thoughts and intentions will be cut off. We have our own weaknesses. Everybody's different. Then when whoever has some kind of different obstacles, dif different weaknesses in their souls and body or mind, when we wear this full armor of God, then we'll be okay. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, this faith is active, like the shield that is raised to catch the fire darts. It is also passive in that it trusts in God for deliverance. Under the impact of temptation of any kind, it is faith that restores confidence and enables one to carry on the battle. So faith is passive as well as active. So we have to actually run this faith. But to actually exude our faith, to use and utilize our faith, we have to call upon the name of Jesus. We have to call the help from Jesus. So based on the power that Jesus is giving us, we have to resist those bad and evil thoughts that Satan is always putting inside us. So when we, when we go on with the fight, this spiritual fight, just like the egg we saw just a while ago, there is a yolk and there's glare. 
the Bible is talking about like this, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. The reason why we are not perished is that why we are fighting this fight, our glare, this white thingy, will be smaller and smaller and smaller. And our inward man, the yoke, the yellow part, will get bigger and bigger and bigger every day. Bible is promising us today that God will make us do this. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, it says that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man. So only God, only by Jesus, only by the Holy Spirit, our inner self, our inner man who wants to follow God will grow bigger and bigger and stronger. So this infertilized egg can only be leave and grow and grow and becomes the chick. So this yoke grows bigger and it will have a seed finally, eventually. And whenever we just call upon the name of Jesus and fight against the Satan's temptations and thoughts and just try to get rid of all the feelings, all the excitements and Satan's thoughts, we can get rid of them by calling upon the name of Jesus. And every time we do that, every time we practice that, then our seed inside our yoke will grow bigger and bigger. And finally, it will fill the entire egg. And what happens? That's the moment that the Bible is telling us that we can be changed like Jesus. We can have His own character. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, it says, But speaking the truth in, in love may grow up in all things into Him who is the head, Christ. This is our goal. We, I'm th so thankful that we have this goal. We are sinners, right? When we look at each other, all we become is one of us, right? But when we look at Jesus and call upon His name every day, then we'll be more like Jesus every day. This fight is not actually belongs to us. This fight is against the Spirit, against Satan. This fight is not that we are fighting right now. Jesus is fighting instead of us. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus, every day, every moment, we have to call His name. Is it kind of like magical spell? No, it's not a magical spell. It's actual practice, the actual practice of faith in our life to our inward man to be grow up. We have to go to heaven, right? So this is the fight we have to fight. Prayer is not another weapon. Rather, it is the spirit, the manner in which the whole armor is to be worn and the battle fought. Paul is here urging it as a perpetual state of mind, a continuous attitude of communion with God. So this is it. This is the true meaning of call upon the name of Jesus. Then the result is for us, for our inward man will grow bigger and larger and stronger. The book of John chapter 13 verse 2 says, And supper being ended, the devil, having already put, in, put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. 
So this is this verse is exactly showing us that how Satan is putting his own idea to us. Then when we when we are at that moment, when we were at that moment, what should we do? We have to call upon the name of Jesus to get rid of, to go away from that thought. So this is the right moment to call upon the name of Jesus. But when Satan is putting his own idea to our thoughts and mind, and when we accept it by our own inner self, by our own selfishness, then we'll be burned down. But instead, we must call upon the name of Jesus. Instead of walking the light, he chose to walk in darkness, evil desires, covetousness, revengeful passions, dark and sullen thoughts were cherished until Satan gained full control of him. So this is how Satan tempted Judas. And Judas accepted Satan's temptation. If Judas ever called upon the name of Jesus and withdrew all the evil thoughts, his love of money led him to agree to betray his Lord into the hands of his bitterest enemies. Satan was working directly through Judas. And in the midst of the impressed scene of the Last Supper, the traitor was devising plans to betray his master. So Satan actually appealed onto this selfishness of Judas Iscariot, the love for his uh, his love for money. So let me introduce one. Deaconess, she used to love pop songs, old pop songs, when she was a university student. And now, this is she. Uh, 그 길을 가고 싶었어요. 아주 가고 싶은 열망이 더 일기 시작했거든요. 등록을 해서 팝송 클래스에 앉아서 아, 뭐 예수님 부르면서 하면 되겠지 즐거우니까 같은 노래니까 그래서 거기서 앉아가지고 두 시간을 노래를 했는데요. 아이 머리가 자꾸 아프기 시작한 거예요. 근데 하나님을 부르려 그러니까 안 불러져요. 안 불러지고 그 성령의 음성이 들렸어요, 사실은. 너가 왜 거기 있냐? 근데 그게 듣고 싶지가 않았어요. 그래서 또두 번째 일주일이 흐르고 또 다시 갔어요. 갔는데 머리가 더 아프기 시작한 거예요, 사실은. 그래서 제가 머리 아픈 이유를 생각해 보니까 거기 노래 가르치는 선생님이 영어 단어를 틀리게 말하고 또 발음도 틀리게 했어요. 근데 그게 말이 하고 싶어가지고 그 틀렸다는 얘기를 너무나 하고 싶었어요. 하고 싶었는데 말을 못했어요. 그거와 싸우느라고 제 힘으로 누르기 시작하니까 제가 머리가 땡기고 열이 올라가지고 제가 화장실 가서 얼굴을 보니까 얼굴이 시뻘개져 있더라고요. 그래서 내가 첫째 무엇을 잘못을 했냐 실수를 했냐 잘못된 선택으로 잘못된 장소에 가 있었고 두 번째는 거기 가서 하나님을 부른다는 자체가 문제예요 잘못된 곳에 가서 하나님을 부르면 은 마음의 죄를 악을 품고 하나님을 부르면 은 하나님이 대답해 주시겠습니까 대답해 주시지 않죠 그것을 한참 후에 알았어요. 머리가 이렇게 심하게 아프고 제가 고통스러우니까. 그러는 중에 제가 서서히 아침마다 
마음이 불안해지기 시작해서 제가 공황장애가 있거든요. 그래서 그 정도가 조금씩 조금씩 심해지더라고요. So Sorry. you just heard the procedure of how Satan is tempting people, tempting us right now. She was, Satan actually appealed to her own desire, the pop song, right? And she was at the venue where she could listen to pop song. And then another temptation came. She wanted to correct the instructor's pronunciation mistakes. And she refused to listen to God's, the ideas that God is pulling on, on her. So book of James chapter 1, verse 6 through 7, it says, But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So when we think, that we cannot actually fight this war. But what about Jesus? We have to think about Jesus and how he won this battle because he is our master and he won this war. The first Adam fell. The second Adam held fast to God and his word under the most trying circumstances. And his faith in his father's goodness, mercy, and love did not waver for one moment. It is written was his weapon of resistance. And it is the sword of the spirit which every human being is to use. The whole armor, faith, the shield of faith, the sword of the Lord, the word of God. We have to utilize these weapons that God has given us against Satan's temptation. So when we try every time to call upon the name of Jesus and try to get rid of the, all the thoughts that Satan is putting in us, then what, what happens? One by one, our faith will become bigger and bigger. And later, Satan will leave us. The prince of this world comes said Jesus, and hath nothing in me. There was in him nothing that responded to Satan's sophistry. He did not consent to sin. Not even by a thought did he yield to temptation. So may it be with us. We can do this too. By the power of Jesus, because Jesus has already won this battle by the word of God. When we wear this full armor of God, then we can actually win over the temptation of Satan. And uh, let's listen to, let's go back to her testimony. <laughs> I'm 불안한 마음이 없어지는 거예요. 없어지고 그 다음 날 자도 자고 일어나도 새벽에 불안해야 되는데 아 불안하지 않고 마음이 서서히 평안해지고 아 밥이 먹고 싶어요. 밥이 밥이 먹고 싶고 야 하나님이 빨리 역사해 주시네. 사단이 역사했을 때는 저에게 괴로움을 주고. 막 불안한 마음, 막 심장이 뛰고 다리가 후들거리고 제가 심태에 와서 하나님을 부르기 시작할 때제 정세를 없이 해주시고 자꾸 하나님께서 나는 끝까지 너를 포기하지 않아 
너를 포기할 수가 없어 오늘 하루 종일 그 음성을 들려주셔요 그래서 그러시면요 하나님 저도 하나님을 포기하지 않을 거예요 끝까지 하나님 하나님 따라가겠습니다 그래서 영생까지 가고 싶은 그런 마음이 자꾸 생기는 거예요 그래서 사단은 저를 파멸의 길로 가게 했고 하나님께서는 그것을 역전을 시켜주셔서 제 정세를 없애줄 뿐 아니라 제 나쁜 교만, 자아 포기 못하는 것을 이번 기회에 저에게 밝혀주셨어요 그 죄를 없애지 않으면 그 교만이 교만의 비수가 나를 찔려서 파면의 길로 간다는 것을 확실히 저 아르켜 주셨어요 여러분 께 하나님께서 그래서 저 교만 낮춰 주시고 겸손하게 하나님께 온전히 순종하면서 주의 길로만 갈수 있도록 하나님께서 살살 몰아 주시니 너무 너무 감사합니다. 음. So we have to look at this principle today. And why? Because when we go to Jesus, God is letting them taste, taste a little bit of the faith and peace and healings. But when they taste a little bit of God's peace, they have to make a choice. Whether to stay with God or whether to follow their own desires. So today we have to promise God and we have to promise ourselves, make decisions today that we have to call upon the name of Jesus and actually wear the full armor of God. Thank you. Our Father in heaven. A spark of the heavenly world has actually come down onto the earth. So that's why we have been struggling within this whole battles between good and evil. And we may have been actually lost many times, but Lord, by the word, by the power of the word that you have given us today. May you guide us to win over this world. Lord, whenever Satan is trying to put his ideas inside our mind, Lord, please bless us to call upon the name of Jesus and win over those temptations. Lord, we thank you for giving us Jesus, our principal, our role model. Through his experiences we learn, and through his cross we are saved. Lord, please, may guide us, may you guide us and help us to win this war between good and evil. Lord, we know that you are, you are the expert in turning the tide in this war. So please bless us and guide us to win this war by calling upon the name of Jesus. I pray this in the name of Jesus who saved us. Amen.